Good Monday morning. Remember last week I told you there was a final bowl judgment and this is the last one of the 21 judgments that come in the book of Revelation. And it begins this way in chapter 16, verse 17. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple yet again from the throne saying, it is done. Are those reminiscent to other words we've heard before from Jesus? Yeah, Jesus is announcing it is done here and he did that one other time. Do you remember where it was? It was on the cross when he said, it is finished. And the work that he started 2,000 years ago then, where there was this pause in judgment and the season of grace had come, now the final culmination of all judgment is done in this moment. And Jesus makes that announcement, and it's a very different announcement than the one he made at the cross. And there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a great earthquake, such as there had never been since man was on the earth. So great was that earthquake. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And God remembered Babylon the great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found. And great hailstones, about 100 pounds each, fell from heaven on people, and they cursed God for the plague of hail, because the plague was so severe. So the final judgment will be this lightning and rumblings and thunder and a great earthquake and hell like we can't even imagine and yet people will still be cursing God. But Jesus will say, it is finally done. And inside of that we have this picture that God is remembering Babylon the Great. Well, who really is Babylon? In chapters 14 and 16, we have read where she has fallen. But chapter 17 brings us into a picture of who this Babylon really is. is. So let's look inside of that for a minute, beginning with chapter 17, verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me. So now one of these angels is coming to talk with John, saying, Come here. I will show you the judgment and doom of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, meaning she's influencing all the nations. She with whom the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality and the inhabitants of the earth have become intoxicated with the wine of her immorality. And the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was entirely covered with blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, this is very different from the woman in chapter 12 who brought forth a son, which was Israel. That was the woman. This woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold, precious stones and pearls. And she was holding in her hand a gold cup full of the abominations and the filth of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead, a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, of false religions and heresies and the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of saints of God's people and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus who were martyred. Wow, what does that mean? Okay, let's unpack it for just a few minutes. The word Babylon represents well, let's think about the first time we ever heard it mentioned. Remember, it was back in Genesis, and there was a story of the Tower of Babel. And this was a, a place where um, it was actually built in the, in the city of Babylon, and the people were trying to build this tower, and their whole goal was to build this tower to God. Basically, they wanted to be like God. 
that was their goal and so they had all this knowledge and they were going to build it and what did god do god came down stopped them how by confusing all of their language and making them sound like they were babbling and so that's how it all came and that's how this saying the tower of babel came about and so babylon represents um, both a place, an actual city, as we had there with the Tower of Babel, but it also has a system attached to it, a mentality, a mindset, a way of doing business. And it is an immoral system that was birthed and distributed that the Antichrist loves and has used to propagate his world system, if you will. It is full of immorality, it's full of idolatry, it's full of false religion and heresies, and that is what it has infiltrated the world with, and it's the world system, if you will, that has been used to deceive the people that have been deceived by the message of the Antichrist. And in this moment, when, um, which I think is also interesting if you parlay back to the Tower of Babel itself in Genesis, they were so full of knowledge. And the Lord said, if we let them keep going, they'll be able to do anything. And think of all the knowledge that we have that lives and dwells inside of our environment today. If you think of all that's been created in the last hundred years alone and the way knowledge has increased in the earth, um, it, it feels like man can do so much that now they're creating artificial intelligence because it's like we're out um, out knowledging our own brains. And so now you need an artificial intelligence to hold the knowledge. So we're, we're in this state and place it, on so many different levels. And it is inside of this that this Babylon, um, this Babylonian system, if you will, has been able to flourish and be propagated. And the, the people, it says, are drunk on her immorality. So the peoples on the earth have drunk of everything she has had to offer. And now they are finally going to be destroyed. Friends, this culture has offered us every conceiv conceivable aspect of immorality and false doctrine that we could hold. I don't know how we can hold much more. I mean, when you have to advise and protect a child as young as eight years old from seeing pornography on the internet at the age of eight, we've become a place of exceptional, of exceptional immorality. We've become a Babylonian system. But one day, when the final judgment comes, all of these things that, that people have become drunk on, calling lies truth as if that makes them true. But what's missed is what's really happening is people are still being held inside of their bondage. But one day it will come to an end and it will be no more. Just as God stopped the work at the Tower of Babel, He will stop the work of the Babylonian system today. My prayer is that you and I will continue to be voices of truth in a world so desperate for it. Because the harvest is still plentiful today. And there is good news for all of the brokenness of this world. And He has revealed in Revelation, but He's also revealed through our hearts and our voice today. And His name is Jesus. Jesus.